Why is it that we're capable of more than we think we are? I mean, what's holding us back? That is actually a relatively simple answer. What holds you back is usually the limiting beliefs you have about what you're capable of. What story are you telling yourself? Life is what you focus on. Change your story, change your life. I am Lisa Roars, former executive coach turned podcaster and digital course creator. Just a few years ago, my typically unwavering optimism was put to the test when my autoimmune system went sideways and handcuffed my dreams to positively impact the world. Fast forward though, through years of failed experiments, dozens of doctors and countless hours of research, and I am now a healthy, thriving CEO of a business that is positively impacting the world by empowering people to exchange fear for fortitude and dis-ease for durability. I created the Sunshine Cafe podcast to give you strategies to be your best self-advocate so you can focus on the things which light you up. If you're looking for hope and encouragement to live a life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's dive in. Hey, welcome back to the Sunshine Cafe, everyone. I'm Lisa Roars, your host, and today I have a very special episode for you. A couple of weeks ago, I had the great privilege of attending one of Tony Robbins' events. And let me just say, there is a very good reason why that man is as successful as he is, and why celebrities and diplomats and presidents and professional sports teams alike call on him to help them level up their games. Tony has a compelling way of raising your energy and unveiling the path to personal transformation like maybe no one else on this earth ever has, at least not in my generation. As he says, we are here in earth school. And he's right. There's just so much to learn, so much to do. But most of us, myself included, can get stuck. Really stuck. We get stuck in the fear of failure. We get stuck in the overwhelm of daily life and responsibilities. And oh, that list of to-dos and the hamster wheel of daily life, disappointments, frustrations, anger, and feeling like we have no control or ability to impact the world around us. So we just end up existing day by day until we wake up one day and we wonder, hey, how the heck did I get here? <laughs> well, participating in Tony's four-day summit was a game changer for me. I know that some of you were there at the summit called Time to Rise, but for those of you who couldn't make it, I wanted to dedicate this episode to the top five takeaways I took from Tony's Time to Rise summit. And to be clear, this is his information with some of my own commentary, so I credit Tony Robbins for the concepts that I'll be sharing today, but they are so life-impacting that I wanted to share them with you, and I hope it'll ignite a fire in your gut and give you that little nudge you need to get life going again. Stand up and choose to be the powerful leader your life is waiting for. I will also mention that Tony has some great events coming up. And I'll make sure that I put those links in the show notes. So if you want to actually attend one of his events, you'll have the information where you can do that. All right. So with no further ado, let's dive in. All right. Number one, the seasons of life. Tony Robbins talks about the seasons of life, correlating them to the seasons of the year, summer, fall, spring, and winter. So let's start there. To dive into this, I'll start by saying the number one error in most of our self-thinking is that life should not have problems. We were warned that this life is full of trouble. God told us in John 16, in this world, you will have trouble. So why do we ever frame our problems as a surprise or some kind of unique challenge? Problems will always be there. And if you think about it, our problems are simply an invitation to step up. You might be familiar with the song Stronger from the 2011 CD that Kelly Clarkson put out where she sings, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. But that quote was actually penned way back in 1888 in a book called Twilight of the Idols, where Friedrich Nietzsche said, out of life's school of war, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Letting ourselves make mistakes and learning from those mistakes is what gives us the confidence and the fortitude to stand up to the next level of challenges and mistakes. We have a tendency as human beings to exaggerate everything. Maybe this is you. After all, it is a great survival mechanism. If you're prepared for the worst, well, you can survive just about anything less than that. But Tony Robbins will emphatically tell you, 
You live the life you focus on. Change your focus, change your life. And remember that every season has its purpose. Every season has an opportunity in it. But maybe you or someone around you is in that current season of the worsts. It's the worst political season, which, by the way, regardless of all the mudslinging of this current election cycle we're in, this is nothing new. If you look through the history of political battles, you'll see quickly that we are actually pretty consistent in our political woes. (laughs) But maybe right now you're in a season where your health is the worst. Your kid's situation is the worst. The weather is the worst. In general, we are all drowning in information, struggling to find truth, and, frankly, starving for wisdom. But any of us can deal with a difficult day if we have hope and a clear, compelling future. While there will always be problems in this earth school that we're living in, we have to remember that no war lasts forever, no problems last forever. This, too, will pass. Change is automatic. Your body's going to change. Your kids will change. Your job will change. Your friends may change. Change is constant and automatic. But progress, now progress, by contrast, is not. Progress takes intention. So the seasons of life, summer, winter, fall, and spring, it's that pattern and rhythm of life since the very beginning of time. There's an easy time and a testing time, a rewarding time, and then a testing time. Let's talk about winter first, since we are currently here in the Midwest in winter. And after many, many months, actually three and a half months of brown lawns, God has transformed overnight our backyard into a winter wonderland. It is absolutely spectacular. So during the season of winter, everything seems impossible. It's cold. It's difficult. There's no fruits to harvest. The days are shorter. There's less sunlight. It's cold, and historically, this is a challenging time. But I often wonder, how the heck did the pilgrims live through the winters here in the Midwest? I know a lot of those early pioneers didn't live through the winter, but it truly amazes me that any of them made it with sub-zero temperatures and no grocery stores, no running water, no guarantee that they had enough wood to feed the fire through those desolate months. Truly, if you can do well and survive in the winter, you will thrive exponentially through the other seasons as this is one of the toughest seasons. Thrive in the winter and you'll dominate in every other season. Winters make us strong. Then we have spring. Spring is a time of renewal and fresh starts, renewed hope, renewed energy and vigor. It's a time to plant and a time to plan, a time of joy and celebration, if for no other reason than we made it through the winter. <laughs> and then there's summer that easygoing, laid-back season where everything just seems great and it feels like it always will be. But then, fall arrives and the serious planning kicks in. Time to cut and stack the wood. Time to harvest and store the food. Batten down the hatches and prepare because winter is coming. Here in the United States, we are definitely in a time of winter. So much confusion and negativity and it's quite difficult to even find truth. But there is hope, my friends. Spring is coming. Hold on to the hope and lean into God. Use this time to build your strength and endurance for the challenges that are sure to come next winter. We are resilient people. You are more resilient than you know you are. You will move through this season of winter. Our country will move through this season of winter and we will be stronger and in fact, even better for it. This is a good lead into my next takeaway from Tony Robbins' Time to Rise Summit because he talks about patterns. And in the scheme of history and historical patterns, he summarizes it this way. And if you think about it, this is spot on. Good times create weak people. Weak people create bad times. This is how we end up in winter, which is where we are right now. But hard times create strong people and strong people create good times. So that's the pattern we follow. And that's the pattern we followed since the beginning of the age. So let's dive in to patterns because patterns are a key part of success and knowing how to permanently change your life. You want permanent results? You need permanent change and leveling up on your pattern recognition is going to help you. So the number two takeaway patterns. There are three components to this takeaway related to patterns. There's pattern recognition, pattern utilization, and pattern creation. So 
let's look at how to recognize patterns. I want to encourage you to start looking for patterns. Get really good at recognizing patterns, both externally and internally. Your skill in this area will help strip away fear and anxiety and will instead start to serve you like a superpower. Financial planners recognize the patterns. Sales teams, they know the patterns. Successful sport teams, oh, they know how to look for and recognize patterns in their own game as well as the game of their competitors. Let's take a look, for example, on an internal pattern. The emotional pattern that most people follow when they're dealing with a loss or even something like the pandemic that we all just went through. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross created this five stages of loss and kind of the emotional phases we go through with loss. So let's use the example of receiving a cancer diagnosis. At first, we go through denial. Like, no, this can't be. I can't really have that diagnosis. I can't really have that issue. Certainly, they must be wrong. It must have been a, an incorrect diagnosis. Second, we move into anger, frustration, and anxiousness or anxiety. You get mad at the cancer. You get mad and frustrated at the diagnosis or the doctors and how it all went down and how you learned the information or you start getting anxious about the answers that are yet to be identified. Then you start bargaining. The third phase, God, if you'll just heal me, if you'll just do X, then I'll do Y. This is a time of surrendering where you start negotiating. The fourth phase is sadness, loss, depression. And then the reality of the situation really sinks in. And then you can move on to the fifth phase, which is acceptance. Okay, it is what it is. Acknowledging that it is there and you have to decide what you're going to do about it. But what Elizabeth Kubler-Ross missed in her five stages of grief is one that Tony Robbins brings to the surface and perhaps is the most important step, the step that will truly change your life, which is creating something new. When something ends or when a devastation arrives, it's an opportunity and something new can begin. So if we understand the pattern of these five stages of grief or six stages of grief, and we know that we're gonna go through those stages, it can really help us adapt and recover from huge life altering changes and loss. It becomes a bit of a future telling superpower. Now we just covered an emotional pattern, which is kind of an internal pattern, but there are external patterns all over the place. The human existence is riddled with patterns. We talked about the patterns in history, and there are certainly patterns in the financial markets, play calls during a football game, or even patterns for business growth. So the second component of this pattern takeaway is pattern utilization. So we have recognition and now utilization. This concept is to use those patterns that you're starting to see. Utilize the patterns to maximize your success. Once you get good at seeing the patterns, that'll help you know when to invest, when to buy, when to move, when to stay, when to change jobs, and so forth. It's not quite exactly a crystal ball, but it will help you utilize the patterns to increase your odds of success and to help you achieve the goals that you're aiming for. So you recognize the patterns, you begin to utilize those patterns, and the final step is pattern creation. You can follow someone else's pattern until you're able to create your own. I'll give you an example. I'm a musician and I love to write music and I love playing music. Music is a huge part of my life. When I started learning how to play the piano and learning how to write music, I followed somebody else's pattern. I mimicked their pattern until I was able to create my own. So you might copy someone else's song and learn their song and you learn the structure of their patterns, but eventually you can leave that track and start creating a pattern of your own. Okay, so we've talked about the seasons that we all go through in life, and we've talked about the patterns and how to recognize them, utilize them, and create patterns for success. But Tony Robbins will tell you that the number one thing that will impact everything you do and the outcome that you get is energy. The number three takeaway is energy, and energy is everything. Tony says when you're in a lousy state, you're going to have a lousy day. Low energy input, low energy output. Our brains were just not designed to make us happy. No, they were designed to make us survive. But we do need our brains to serve us. We don't want to be just serving them. When you're a high energy, you are unstoppable. 
People can blame a whole litany of things about why they're not successful or why they don't have the job they want or the life they want. Or they can blame their childhood, their parents, their boss, their health. But stop for a moment. Are there people that you know who have had horrible childhoods and still made an amazing high impact life for themselves, making a difference in everyone's life that they connect with? Yes. And I'll tell you what, Tony is one of them. Are there people out there with bad jobs, bad health, bad, whatever, fill in the blank who have still found success and turned it around. Then those experiences are not the blocker. If they can do it, you can too, but the path of least resistance will never make you proud. The comfortable path will never make you strong or happy. The comfort zone is the danger zone. People can either focus on the negative and let it bring them down or use that negative to propel them to do difficult things and build self-esteem. When you hear someone say, oh, you can't do that. Does your internal voice say, oh, yeah, you're right. I probably can't. Or do you hear in the back of your mind with some kind of a fierce and powerful voice? Oh yeah, watch me. There is power in your internal voice. That is the voice of your resilience. Bring that voice out of your head and into the world. If there's a conflict, who do you want to follow? The timid, meek, undecided person or the confident, high energy level person who comes in with high energy and says, hey, we got this. Follow me. My friends, we have to remember that posture is power. The way we carry ourselves matters. Animals know this instinctually. For those who are familiar with Caesar Milan, he has a show on the Disney Channel called, um, I think it's just Caesar Milan, maybe the dog whisperer, but he's called the dog whisperer and he teaches the power of energy and how we respond to our animals and our dogs and how the animals respond to us differently when our energy is different. And it's ridiculously effective. No, it's really not some kind of crazy woo idea, ungrounded without scientific basis. No, it really is a scientific fact. Our energy matters. Teams who play with high energy win. Businesses who foster high energy succeed. Leaders who emit a powerful, strong posture and convey strength and authority with just their presence and their energy, those leaders can lead. Have you ever met somebody or been around someone who just has that kind of contagious energy and makes you want to be around them? You have that inside you. We all do. But if you don't have that high, powerful energy, where do you get it? Where does that energy come from? Well, you might think, oh, maybe it's from food. And while food can be a source of energy, and certainly it's a source of fuel, and what we put in our bodies truly matters, but it's not the source. Think about it for a second. After a huge meal, you should be highly energized, right? Well, after that Thanksgiving meal or that large dinner out that you had and you're feeling stuffed and then on top of feeling stuffed, you add some dessert. I tell you, those are not very energized moments for me. I usually need a, a nap on the couch after that. <laughs> and then there are those people who feel highly energized after three days of fasting. I know I do. After three days of fasting, I feel like I'm ready to take on the world. So I don't think food is generally the source of our energy. So what about sleep? Well, I don't know about that one either, because I tell you what, I wear an iWatch at night to capture my sleep data, and I can see that data every night. And sometimes my best nights of sleep by the numbers is also the morning where I feel so groggy and like I just got run over by a semi truck. And yet other nights where I'm really short on sleep, I went to bed late and the metrics suggest really poor quality of sleep. I wake up feeling amazing, alert, energized, and ready to take on the day. So I don't think energy is sourced in general, just from sleep. Although sleep is really important, really important. It's not the reason we have energy. So where do we get our energy from and how do we tap into that powerful energy if we're not feeling it? Well, I'll tell you what, Tony tells us it's the biochemical and the physiological changes which bind our memories and ignite our energy. Do you ever have any of those random memories from years ago that pop into your memory that you remember so crystal clear and yet you kind of struggle to think about what you ate for lunch two days ago? Something physiological happened in those moments that you remember and it binds those memories. 
The change in your body's physiology is what ignites your energy. Sound can ignite our energy. Put one of those songs on with an upbeat tempo and soon your foot is tapping and your energy is rising. Competition can also ignite our energy. In fact, competition comes from the Latin word that means working together. You are literally working together to improve and level up the other person's game. We make each other better when we compete. We raise each other's energy when we compete. I challenge you right now, stand up and do the goofiest dance movement you can possibly imagine. Run in place, do some jumping jacks, yell out loud to those empty walls around you. Raise up your arms to the sky with your hands in a fist and yell to yourself, I'm powerful. There's just no way you can fully engage in those kinds of physical movements and not raise your energy levels. Unless you're not all in, if you're all in and you're doing those movements all in and you're yelling at the top of your lungs all in, there's just no way that your physical movements won't raise your energy levels. In fact, there was a study from Harvard that showed that if you stand in a powerful position with your shoulders back, breathing in deep, thinking, feeling powerful, and if you do this for two minutes, the biochemical impact, regardless of being male or female, is you'll increase the level of your testosterone in your system by 20%. 20% after just two minutes. And the stress hormone in your body, the cortisol levels, will drop by 25%. And your risk tolerances, those increase by 33%. After just two minutes, just imagine the impact you could make on your own physiology by adopting a posture of power all day long. In the same topic of energy, Tony talks about breakthroughs. What is a breakthrough? He defines it as a moment in time where what seemed impossible happens because you finally acted on it. This is that moment when you finally changed and you quit smoking. You finally decided and you quit drinking. Where you completely decided to lose the 50 pounds. It's the action we take when we are in that high and powerful energy state is when and where you create a new belief and a new drive, and you achieve a breakthrough. The fastest way to change your state is to make a radical change in your physiology. Use all five senses. The more you use, the more powerful your inner strength and beliefs become. You, my friend, are resilient, and you're capable of more than you realize. Okay, so why is that? Well, let's dive into the fourth takeaway from Tony's summit. Number four is limiting beliefs. Why is it that we're capable of more than we think we are. I mean, what's holding us back? That is actually a relatively simple answer. What holds you back is usually the limiting beliefs you have about what you're capable of. What story are you telling yourself? Life is what you focus on. Change your story, change your life. So as you're listening to this podcast, I'd like you to consider one thing that you've wanted or one thing that you yet want, but you haven't done it yet. Why haven't you done it? What have you told yourself are the reasons and what's holding you back? Perhaps it's, uh, I don't have enough credentials. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't know how to start. I'm not smart enough. These are global beliefs. They are the statements that you tell yourself about what you are. There are two powerful forces for the human identity. One is how you define yourself. And two is the need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. That desire for homeostasis. So let me ask you, when did you come up with the definition for yourself? Are you aware of what your self-definition is and where that definition came from? Let's stop and consider for a moment the fact that our lives are affected most powerfully by invisible forces. Let's take, for example, radiation. Too much of it can kill you, but you can't see it. Electricity. It's a needed convenience in our society. And again, a large zap. Yep, it'll kill you. Wind. Oh, the gentle breeze is one of the most refreshing gifts on a hot summer day. And yet that same force can wipe out an entire city if hit by a tornado. So invisible forces affect our lives. Well, the most constant and consistent, powerful and invisible force 
are our own beliefs and emotions. They are with us every day, all day long. They affect us every waking moment and sometimes even in our sleeping hours. So with that said, you have to understand that no long-term behavior changes without a change in your belief. And most of these beliefs that you're telling yourself, it's that filter that you view all of life through. Well, those filters were created by the people you grew up around, the circumstances, the family members, the heroes, the friends, or the villains who influenced you or who are still influencing you. We emulate the people we are around, both good and bad. There is a profound truth in the statement from Proverbs 27:17, which says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And of course, the opposite of that statement can also be said. If you're hanging around people that you don't want to be like, it might be time to consider making some changes to the circle of influencers you're choosing to hang around. Because beliefs can create and beliefs can destroy. A quick example about how changing our beliefs can change your actions and change your life. Let's consider, for example, someone who is a smoker. And let's say, let's say you're a smoker and you quit smoking years ago. What if I walked up to you and offered you a cigarette? What would you say? You might say, oh, no, thanks. You might say, oh, no, I don't smoke. Or you might say, I'm not a smoker. That is an identifying belief. When it's no longer you, then it's effortless to keep the change. You've changed your self-identifying belief. We tend to judge who we are by what we do and what we've done. You can do dumb things without being a dumb person. But if you begin to define yourself as dumb or stupid, you start only seeing those behaviors and the things that you've done that fall into that bucket. A quick example, I'm looking for a new car right now. I'm not in a hurry, but I'm keeping my eyes open for what might be the next car for me because my car is kind of getting long in mileage. So I've narrowed down my potential future car choices to a few. And now when I'm driving around town, all I see are those two to three kinds of cars. They're everywhere. It's like they're going to be sold out by the time I decide to finally buy one because everybody has one of these two to three cars. But obviously that's not the case. It's just that's what I'm focusing on. So that's all I see. So life changes when you do something you didn't think you could, but then you get it done. You were a smoker and then you quit. And now you're no longer a smoker. You redefined your identity and you changed your belief. You're changing what you're focusing on. And when you're faced with the next problem, the challenge of the mountain to climb, then you'll start to say to yourself, well, if I was able to do that, I can do this. And what else might I be able to accomplish? This is how you change your beliefs. You start getting it done and doing things you didn't think you could do. And once you accomplish it, you're changing your beliefs for the next things that you'll accomplish. And this isn't to say that you're going to venture into those options without being scared or fearful. Remember, courage is not the absence of fear, but the determination that something else is more important than fear. So is your growth more important? Is your life more important? Stop letting fear, the fear of failure, the fear of looking foolish or making a mistake or not doing it just perfectly. Stop letting those fears keep you from trying. Your identity is the controlling force in your life. And most of us are more concerned about our limitations than we are about our capabilities. Tony Robbins talks about how our identity defines our comfort zone. Tony gave this great word picture to explain the point. Let's say 68 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere maybe around 20 degrees Celsius, is your comfort zone. It might not be where you want to be, but let's just say that's where we are currently at. That's where we tend to feel most comfortable. So it's our comfort zone. And that's where we typically reside. That's where we reside in relationship to love or, or relationships or the attitude toward our body, toward our businesses. You're everything. Again, it's not the goal. It's just the comfort zone. And that's kind of your current identity. Okay, so you're comfortable at 68 degrees. And all of a sudden, that temperature drops down to 58 degrees. Things have taken a turn and have really gotten bad. You're 10 degrees worse and your brain goes wacko and your drive wakes up and you hunker down to do all the things that you must to push yourself back up to the 68 degrees where you're comfortable once again. There is that point 
where things are so bad and the temperature is so cold that you will start making a change. But on the flip side, if your temperature goes up to 78, things are looking 10 degrees better. And at that point, you're rocking and rolling. You're starting to have some major success. Your brain's also going to kick in and say, whoa, 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 wait, wait. It's, too oh no, that's too hot. I like it at 68 degrees. Let's come back down to 68 degrees where you're more comfortable. This, this is too good. Let's get back to where we're more comfortable and where I know as your brain how to keep you safe and keep you comfortable. This is where you're used to. So even though intellectually you know better, all the factors in your brain that want you back at 68 degrees will influence you. The automatic self-preservation instincts will control you when you're not good enough and when you're doing better than you expected. Okay, so great, you say. <laughs> so I'm stuck either way. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, not at all. What I'm trying to do is awake the recognition for you so you can see how these things happen to all of us and how you can stop your auto self-preservation instincts from taking over and interrupting your success. And how do you do that? You have to expand your identity and expand your comfort zone. The most powerful way to do that is to do something great that you've never done before. Something that is inconsistent with your normal behavior. Something that wakes up your brain and says, see, that's not necessarily me anymore. I'm capable of bigger things. I'm capable of more. You have the ability to do hard things. You have the ability to do things that you might have never chosen to do and maybe would have considered to be impossible. You have that in you and I'll prove it. Consider for a moment if your child or your parent or other loved one was 10 feet away, dying over a short expanse of burning coals, perhaps on the other side of a fire. You would cross that bridge. You would find a way to cross that bridge and save that loved one. So it's not a matter that you can't do it, but it is a matter of finding the warrior in you who will walk across that bridge. And once you've done something that you didn't think you could do, wow, <laughs> then you stop and you have to ask yourself, wow, if I can do that, what else could I do? It completely changes your identity. So we've covered takeaway number one, the seasons in your life and how to use those to plan and prepare and keep us hopeful in the midst of hard times. We've also discussed takeaway number two, which is patterns, how to recognize them, utilize them and create them for our own success and safety. We've also discussed the third takeaway, which is energy and how everything we do is energy and the simple and effective ways that we can change our physiology to change our energy and increase our motivation to make lasting change. And we just reviewed number four, the invisible force of our limiting beliefs and how those impact our lives and how we can expand those beliefs to help us step out of yesterday's comfort zone into tomorrow's expanded comfort zone for greater success and a greater impact in our lives. The last takeaway I want to touch on is not really one Tony talked about much during the Time to Rise Summit, but for me, this takeaway ties everything together. And that simply is your why. Why do you want to change? Why would life be better? Why would better energy redefine your limiting beliefs? Looking for patterns and understanding the seasons of life are all great ideas, but why would I want to do that? Why would it help me? And why would I want to take the energy or spend the energy to make those changes at all? So number five is because if you have a strong enough why, you will always figure out the what. We all have things we want to do, but what takes that thing that I want to do and turns it into something I must do. It all comes down to our compelling and energizing, no, I can't say no to that, why? You need to get real with yourself and understand why you want to heal. Why do you want to quit smoking? Why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to change that circle of friends who keep dragging you back into the behaviors that you don't want to engage in anymore? Why do you want to start the business, leave the job, get the job, reconcile with a family member, go back to school, sign up for that MBA? What is your why? When I started my healing journey with a hyper nourishing protocol to heal from my autoimmune, whatever it was, I had a compelling why. In fact, I took quite a bit of time to stop 
and write down a whole list of whys. But the top item on that list was I wanted to walk again. While that is a really compelling reason, that wasn't enough. I had to take my brain on a journey and to really put myself into the new reality to see the things that I was going to miss if I didn't get this done. And in my mind, I had to see the reality of the life that I would have if I did heal my body. So I made a long list and I sketched out in my mind what being healed might look like. And I really saw it with as many details as I could possibly imagine. And like putting on a beautiful dress or for the gentleman out there trying on that dapper three-piece suit, I tried on that reality with all of the details that I could muster and I loved it. I loved that reality. I liked that reality much better than the one I was living where I was unable to live freely and walk and be powerful and be me, be authentically me. I was unable to do the things with my son and to be the mom and the wife I wanted to be. I was unable to maintain my home, walk to the store, laugh and be present with my friends. And I was unable to impact the world around me for good. So with that new me vision in my head, I started my hyper nourishing protocol and the path to my new reality was set in motion. And with that future reality as my clear destination, well, making the changes then that I needed to make was very doable. It wasn't always easy, not at all, because I still had that comfort zone pulling me back into the things that I always considered normal. But little by little, I was crawling out of the pit of dis-ease I had dug for myself, and I was able to start making different choices. I was able to choose life instead of foods that I was addicted to, which were just slowly killing me. I was able to choose differently because I had a very clear and compelling why for why I wanted to change. If I could impact you in any way today in this episode through the five Tony Robbins takeaways that I am summarizing here, I hope at the very minimum, it'll be to do this. Take the time to do a self inventory for your own circumstances. I promise you it'll be so powerful. I'm going to challenge you to carve out 30 minutes for yourself. 30, 30 tiny little minutes out of the 24 hours you get in this day. You can do this and answer five questions for yourself. Where are you today? What are your limiting beliefs and your low energy false stories? What season are you living in? Are you enjoying the good life or are you needing to prepare for winter? Or maybe you're in winter and life seems really desolate and challenging. What patterns do you see in your own thinking, in your life, in the life around you, in the routines, in your family routines? Write those patterns down. Then after you've covered those questions, enjoy the creative journey of architecting your own future life. Okay, so do this. Ask yourself, where do you want to be? And yeah, I know that can be kind of a daunting question. Matter of fact, I I really dislike it when people ask me that question because I often don't know my own desires and I'm not sure why that is. I think we're all better at taking care of other people than we are at taking care of ourselves. So let me narrow it down for you. Imagine yourself at the end of this year, at the end of 2024, you finished your Christmas celebrations, you're gearing up for the new year, which will then be the eve of 2025. Okay. So put yourself there and imagine that. Where do you want to be in that moment? You have 10 months, 10 months between now and that moment. What will your new reality be by the end of this year? What will the healthy you look like? What will the non-addicted you be living like? What does the non-smoker you look like? The non-drinker, the great mom, the great dad, the productive business owner you, the graduated you. It's never too late, my friend. Tomorrow is a new day and God wants you to use the talents and resources he's given you to live a fruitful life, to live your life the very best you can. Go influence people, be a powerful agent for good. Do you think the world is falling apart? God is still in control. Let him handle the world. Do something to improve yourself and help just one person around you and you'll receive dividends back that you never imagined. So 
those are the questions I like you to ponder and consider here sometime in the next couple of days. And then I'd like you to write yourself a letter. I want you to put yourself in that position of end of the year 2024. And I want you to write yourself a letter about the new you and how glad you are about the changes you've made. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to wrap this episode up with a note that my dear friend and actually my producer had written on an Instagram page um, a few weeks back. And I did ask him permission, so he said I could use it. So sit back and imagine Paul Peterson's voice as I read his words. On Monday, I celebrated my 25th year of sobriety. It dawned on me how different my life could be if I didn't make this choice. For the record, this is my, Paul Peterson's journey, and everyone's journey is unique. There are so many things I could have missed, or that could have had a completely different look. I know for a fact I wouldn't be married, and I would have a very different relationship with my kids. I could have been on the outside looking in. At my daughter's wedding this past September, I thought how drastically different everything could have been if I had kept drinking. Maybe I would have been invited to the wedding, but I probably wouldn't have walked my daughter down the aisle. Julie, Paul's wife, would have been remarried and I would have just showed up by myself, feeling sorry for myself and not really being welcome. And that would have given me permission to drown my sorrows. I would have watched my then ex-wife dance with her new husband and my daughter dance with her stepfather instead of me. I also would have missed out on the epic pregnancy announcement earlier in 2023. And as I write this, I'm in Florida, having just met my grandson. I most definitely wouldn't have been invited to participate in this life-changing moment. I think about all the events that I've been able to be part of because of my decision to stop drinking. Vacations, music, graduation, church, travel, all of it. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. If you feel you need help, there is hope on the other side. Don't be afraid to ask. You might not be able to see it while you're in the middle of it, but your life will be forever changed for the better by taking the step to free yourself from alcohol or whatever it is that's preventing you from being free. I thank God every day for the life I have. Thank you to all the humans who have stood by me in this journey, especially my incredible hot wife, Julie, my beautiful kids, friends, and family. And that again, written by St. Paul Peterson. A beautiful testament to the reality he created by stepping into a new identity and choosing to be someone who no longer drank. That's the kind of life that's waiting for you, friends. Next week, we're going to dive deeper into the topic of addiction. That'll be episode 13. It's a great conversation that will be helpful for anyone who feels like they've been running on that hell happiness repeat kind of hamster wheel. It's time for you to be freed. I hope you'll take some time between now and the next episode to think about the things that you want to change. Go through those questions that I mentioned to you a few minutes ago. Let's get you out of the dark and into the amazing life God intended for you to have. It's never too late. As long as you have breath in your lungs, my friend, you have time to live your best life. Let's start today. Hey, thanks for listening or watching today. I want to say a real quick special thank you to Tony Robbins and the Time to Rise team for all of the great work that they're doing and to let you all know that if any of this episode really resonated with you, you might really enjoy attending the event, which is coming up very soon. All the details and the links will be available here in the show notes for you. And also, of course, if you enjoyed the episode, please share this with your friends. Create some accountability partners for redefining your stories and self-identity. Consider maybe getting a couple of friends to walk through those five questions that I challenged you with at the 36 minute mark. It'll give you the clarity that you need to make the changes that you need. Finally, stay tuned for more information about my next round of Fast, Pray, Heal. In that digital course, we're going to learn about the ancient tool of fasting in its various forms and prepare our mindsets to take on that adventure. And then we'll conduct a guided fast together as a community to support each other and find breakthroughs that we never realized were possible. For more information and to sign up, just head over to my website at lisaroars.com. Thanks again for listening and God bless you. Have a great week. Bye.